And the Bucks hope that this will be their first victory ever. We have a great area, a growing area. In Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater, Sarasota, Bradenton, Lakeland, and Winter Haven, and even Wachu. Over two million fans. And it's the fastest growing area in the United States. That's it, ladies and gentlemen, live from Tampa Stadium. For the first time ever in a regular season, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers enter this stadium with numbers in both the win and loss column. The Buccaneers came onto the field through a wild standing ovation from the some 60,000 plus fans at Tampa Stadium. They did not introduce any players individually. The PA announcer said, ladies and gentlemen, your Tampa Bay Buccaneers. San Diego, California, Super Bowl 37. It is Tampa Bay versus the Oakland Raiders. Third down, 18. Dropping Dan and looking Dan and looking Dan. Those up in the hands and it's over. And the 40. Derek Brooks 30. Brooks to the 29. He's got Derek Brooks all the way. There it is. The dagger's in. We're going to win the Super Bowl. Tom Brady signing with the Tampa Bay Bucks tomorrow. Holy hell. Everyone always says, why the Bucks, man? Why did you choose the Bucks?" And it was a no-brainer. Brady has all kinds of time. Goes toward the end zone. It is a caught ball. Touchdown, Tampa Bay, Mike Evans. It's eight seconds, seven seconds. Brady to throw. Throws a deep pass downfield. Got Scotty Miller in the open. Makes the catch. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Super Bowl 55 will be underway. At Raven James Stadium, here's the snap out of the gun. Play action fake pass to Brutkowski. He's going to score a touchdown. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Holy guacamole. Bucks are the Super Bowl champs. They can't stop the clock. And there are the cannons go. Fire them. Keep on firing them. Keep on firing them. The final countdown. I have a lot of energy. So Tampa Bay Buccaneers from the 48-yard line. Second down, 13. Brady lost one downfield. Caught ball by Gronkowski. Inside the 20 to the 15-10. Gronkowski to the 5 to the 4-yard line. Holy <laughs> Gronkamoli. Here's the snap. Pressure coming from the outside. Brady throws a pass. Caught ball. First down to the 50. Outside the numbers, 40. To the 30-yard line. To the 25. And Perriman. Bashad Perriman. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Bucs win in overtime. This is the big nasty. Yeah, big nasty. All big Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan, baby. This is Mike Allstott, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you're listening to the Cannon Fire Podcast. Cannon Fire Podcast, brother. You ain't listening, and you're missing out. Woo! And there the cannons go. Fire them. Keep on firing them. Keep on firing them. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to a brand new edition of the Cannon Fire Podcast. Live on YouTube today, I am your host, as always, Rhett Matthew. Joined alongside me, my good buddy and co-host, the Philly Bucks fan himself, Mr. Evan Wanish of BucksNation.com. We are not alone. Joining us for a little bit of the show today, our good buddy from Smack Apparel, former goaltender in the MLS as well, Jeff Atnella joins the show. How are you doing, guys? I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'll go yeah. first. I'm good. Yeah, go ahead, Just man. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, as always, yeah, you know, happy to happy to have Jeff on, and we're here to, you know, uh, announce something special here in, in a few minutes. But, uh, yeah, really excited for today's show, and we got some Bucks news to talk about, so we were kind of worried we wouldn't have much to talk about, but the Bucks did a few things today that we're going to be able to discuss, so. Yeah, a couple of big signings, of course, the return of playoff Lenny on a three-year deal. We'll talk about that in just a little bit, and then Will Golston also on track to return to Tampa Bay for his 10th season uh, but let's go ahead and get down to business. Jeff, you, you are obviously here for a reason. Uh, you reached out to me on Twitter, and we are teaming up for everybody likes free stuff, right? A little bit of a giveaway. So uh, I'll be honest, full transparency on this podcast at all times. We have no idea what the rules of the contest are yet. We still got to kind of figure that part out. Uh, but we are giving some stuff away courtesy of Smack Apparel. Jeff, tell us all about it, my friend. Yeah, like you said, we're going to work out the details. I think uh, the, the main key will be to follow you guys along on Twitter, follow Smack Pearl on Twitter so we can team up and get those things announced. But we just dropped a new shirt today with all these new signings coming on, with Tom Brady coming back. We feel like at Smack Pearl, there's really only one person that should be getting all of our thanks. So I'm repping it today. I'm going to hold it up. God bless Giselle. <laughs> God bless Giselle. She let the man come back. 
It was looking bleak there for a little bit in Bucks Nation. I'm not even going to lie to you. You know, Baker Mayfield's getting a lot of slander right now, but it might have been the only option we would have had a quarterback here had Tom Brady not come back. So we just want to take a time to acknowledge Giselle. Thank you for letting the GOAT back into our lives. Guys are signing three-year deals. Guys are sticking around for the long term now. Who's, who has it better than us, right? So we just want to take a minute with this shirt right now. Thank Giselle. And we're going to be giving away a couple on Twitter. So like I said, follow Smack Apparel, follow you guys. We'll get the rules announced. We'll get it all synced up a little bit. But, you know, we want to give back to Bucks Nation a little bit because we're, we're jacked about the shirts. We're jacked about Brady coming back. Who wouldn't be? And, you know, it's going to be another good year in Tampa Bay, which as long-suffering Bucks fans, we don't always get to say that. Oh, yeah, 100%, <laughs> man. But follow us on Twitter for all the latest updates at Cannon Firepod, at Reticus, R-H-E-T-T-A-K-U-S, at Evan NFL, and, of course, at Smack Apparel as well. So you guys are on the live stream part of it right now. We're live over on YouTube. You're kind of getting the inside scoop. Like this is almost the unofficial official announcement. Like we'll after the show, we'll probably go and, and we'll come up with the contest rules and make sure we get something on Twitter tonight. But you guys are in here early, so you'll be able uh, you'll be able to be some of the first people to to really get involved in this thing. So we're really excited about it, and we are excited to have Jeff on the show tonight. So let's talk about some Bucks news, fellas. As we have mentioned, a couple of big signings today. And uh, as far as the big three, you, you know, coming into this offseason, we kind of looked at a lot of guys that were of much more importance than the other. I'd say the big three were Chris Godwin, Ryan Jensen, Carlton Davis. But if you had to put a number four right there, it's probably playoff Lenny, the running back number seven. He is back in Tampa Bay on a three year deal, twenty one million dollars uh, with up to twenty four dollars or yeah, twenty four dollars with up to twenty four million dollars in incentives as well. So about $7 million a year for Lenny, which is pretty good news. I mean, he's getting paid like a higher end running back in the NFL, which is what he wanted. We, we learned earlier this week too. He took a visit up to new England to go talk to the Patriots. That obviously didn't work out. He ends up back in the red and pewter for uh, not just one more year, but three more years. So for a lot of people who are excited to have this guy back, it's got to be a breath of relief that they're able to get a long-term deal or, you know, next couple of seasons worth deal done. So, uh, Evan, what are your initial thoughts on on getting Lenny back? Well, you know, initially, just looking at it, I was surprised that it was a three-year deal. Uh, I figured that Fournette would try to, again, have a really nice year, just like he did in 2021, and try to hit the market again next year in hopes of getting you know a lot more money. But, you know, I guess he's – feels like he's found a home in Tampa. So a three-year deal makes sense. It's something that the Bucks have done, you know, with Chris Godwin, Ryan Jensen, Russell Gage. I mean, all these guys are really signing three-year deals. Um, so it, it was interesting that, that the Bucks decided to go a little bit more long-term with him. I, there, there was some, there was some differences in, in the guaranteed money. So Adam Schefter tweeted out the, the details of the contract and he said $9 million is guaranteed. However, in the article he wrote, I believe it said 11 million was guaranteed. So we're not exactly sure what, how much of the guarantees are there. Um, it's, it's a solid deal for Fournette. I was surprised that the Bucks really went as high as they did. Uh, he deserved a raise and he, he got a raise. So, um, you know, he's earned it and hopefully he can come in and have a year like he did in 2021 or maybe even better who knows so uh you know the bucks are definitely a better team now than they were yesterday uh with the addition of Fournette. and i don't think it rules out a running adding a running back at some point either through free agency or, or the draft again so we'll have to wait and see on that yeah jeff what it, yeah go ahead yeah i'll spit i think that for me it's more like it brings stability and you think about leonard Fournette. leonard Fournette in jacksonville was the man he was the man and then he left jacksonville and he got outcasted but if you're looking at jacksonville's track record of outcasting guys and guys leaving that place unhappy right he left that place and his name was kind of drugged to the mud a little bit and people were out were a little skeptical on him but ever since he's come here all he's done is has been eating carries and being our running back one so for me what makes me excited about it, i'm excited that he signed a long-term deal i'm excited that he signed a three-year deal because if and when tom brady does move on we have, a, we have a dog in the backfield who's a running back one, a legit running back one, to go with these other guys that we're signing. And I think ever since he's come to the team, like, there hasn't been any problems. Like, he, he carries the ball well. He runs the ball hard. And he was, he was, like, more than okay to share touches at times. So, I mean, you're going to bring guys in who are going to be complimentary to him. But now, you know, you're giving the ball and you're saying, all right, there's no Ronald Jones. There's nobody else that's going to be 
you know, kind of labeled as that could be the lead guy. So now you have your lead back for the next three years. And for me, I'm just happy to have a little bit of stability at the position because, you know, when, when Brady, if, and when Brady does leave, there's not going to be stability at the quarterback position. So to get a guy like Leonard Fournette, who's going to be able, if it is a young quarterback and it is somebody new, who's going to be able to eat up those carries for the next three years, I'm pumped about it. And I think he is a, I think he's a huge factor for the team going forward. And I'm, I'm pumped. They got three years out of him. Yeah, and for Leonard Fournette, you got to be happy as well because when he left Jacksonville, the Buccaneers picked him up. If I remember, man, they got him for peanuts. Like, literally, yeah. they, they didn't pay anything for him. So, in a sense, you know, he came from scratch as far as determining his worth in the NFL. And, listen, three years at $7 million a year, that's a good contract for a running back in today's NFL. Like, it's it's maybe not what he was wanting. It wasn't the deal he was holding out for. But the fact that he signed for three years makes you – Again, just like you had mentioned, Jeff, it makes you feel all that better about longevity and, and keeping consistency in this offense. And for Leonard Fournette as well, we talk about his skill set, man, is like he can be your bell cow back, but the Bucks aren't running him to it. Uh, they're not running him into a stacked box, you know, two out of three, two out of three downs every single every single conversion or however it goes. But I think his blossoming as a uh, as a pass catching back is is really what makes him so valuable to this team, because there was a time on this podcast where we absolutely slandered Leonard Fournette in the, uh, you know, in the passing game because it felt like the Bucks got a buy one get one deal on running backs who couldn't catch out of the backfield. Ronald Jones, it seemed like whenever he'd get a target out of the backfield, some bad things would happen. And then Leonard Fournette, we saw a couple of bad things happen as well throughout the course of 2020. But 2021, man, he proved he is, you know, very utilitarian as far as the all around running back goes. And it's great to have a guy like that back in your backfield because now there's just less questions overall. So, um, you know, along with that, and then the fact that he signed a three-year deal, I think it's also important to mention all the other three-year deals that everybody's building around. It's almost like the Bucks are laying down the blueprint for what this team's going to look like after Tom Brady. Like, we know for sure 2022 he's going to go out there and do it. 23, who knows, man? I, I would not be shocked if he decides to come back for a, uh, a fourth year, but let's not get ahead of ourselves here. The fact of the matter is, I don't think Brady's going to be here in three years. And when you still got guys like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Russell Gage, and Leonard Fournette on your offense, that is that is one great feeling. As well as Shaq Mason, who's here for the rest of his contract as well. So, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot to feel good about with uh, with Leonard Fournette. See, yeah. I don't even really, I don't even really care that he can catch passes or not. I really don't. <laughs> we have so many guys that can catch. Like, we have so many guys that can catch passes. Like for yeah. me, it's when. Out for me, I want a guy that can give me three, give me three to four yards on first down. Yeah. Give me that consistently, and then see what the offense can do when you're not playing behind the sticks, right? So for me, he's just the type of guy that you know, like when things need to calm down, because you know, with this offense, things do get a little out of control sometimes, and sometimes they got to turn the ball and hand the ball off to somebody that they trust. For me, Leonard Fournette's a dog, and he's just going to eat up yards all for the next three years. And for me, that's what I'm looking for out of my running back, especially a guy like with the offense that we have. Like, of course, it's always good to have a complimentary pass catcher out of the backfield. But at the same time, they'll bring somebody in that could do that just the same. At least that's my opinion. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I like the the point you brought up about how let's say this is Tom Brady's last season. You're going to have some questions at quarterback, maybe. And maybe. The, <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, with, with um, you know, with, with re-signing Leonard Fournette, it's just it's another position that you wouldn't really have a question at. You know, you wouldn't have to worry about oh, well, who's the starting running back, who's the starting receivers. You know, I mean, look at the Atlanta Falcons right now. You know, they really don't know who's who. Uh, they don't have many starting receivers. They just re-signed Cordero Patterson. So I, I like the the point that, that you made about that. How you know him signing that three year deal, it, it provides more just like the word use, you know, stability um, to the position. So hopefully, you know, Fournette can, um, you know, he, he can keep it going, right? Hopefully, you know, uh, I don't think 2021, I think we can all agree 2021 was better than, than 2020 for him, mostly because 2021, he, he really, you know, he established himself as the guy kind and, of, and right? He did, it, he did it early. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, it was, like 2020, right it felt away. like, for more than half of the season, we were going back and forth on Ronald Jones kind of being that guy, Leonard Fournette. We we talk a bunch about December 2020. He's almost cut from the team just because mm -hmm. I guess he's got a little bit of a sour attitude about his role in the running back room. But yeah, if anybody took that job and ran with it in 2021, it was it was big number seven.
And, and the thing is about his, his pass catching, um, you know, when you have Tom Brady as your quarterback, even though, like, you know, if it may not be a big deal to some, he likes to, to throw the running backs. You know, we, we, we know that. And um, the, the thing that impressed me the most about Fournette, it wasn't just three games. It wasn't just a stretch of four games. Oh, he caught the ball well. It was the entire season. Like, he he always really the entire season. And this was a guy who, when, when Jacksonville released him, I didn't really consider. The whole season. And I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I know you had a great point, but we look oh, at the maybe. whole season, and I, I cannot help but remember that week one game because you wanted to talk about yeah. tic-tac interceptions with Tom Brady, <laughs> uh, you know, the guy that got robbed of MVP last year. Well, one of those tic-tac interceptions was off the hands of playoff Lenny, and that was a rough start to the season. I Listen, week one is week one. Yeah, Bucks are after defending that, Super Bowl champs. That? I was a little upset, but, yes, after that point on, uh, I, I think he might have taken it a little bit personally because he really turned it on the rest of the year, like you were saying. Yeah. And how, the, spoiled, the, the... how spoiled are we as Bucks fans that you think a week one close win is a rough <laughs> week one? I, you know, man, you, we, we're long sufferers where we were we were looking for that first win well into the season. So, yeah. you yeah. know, I don't want to I don't want to go. I'm not going to let you get away with a rough week in a win. No, 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 not so we much a rough week. Every win as, as Bucks fans. <laughs> We got to value every single win that we get. Oh, yeah, True. 100%. Right? We've been long time looking for them. Your, your champion teams, they win games. They get it done. It doesn't matter how they get it done. A last-second field goal, you know, it, it does not matter. They will find a way to win. But it wasn't so much a rough week. It was just that little low light from Lenny, and it was a little bit of a stain on on what was almost a perfect season for Tom Brady. Um But, hey, he's got another shot to do it again this year, and with Lenny back there again, you got to feel good about it. Evan, um, what were you saying before, though? Yeah, like I said, just, you know, I, I was worried about when he came back from the injury um, and what was it going to you know, continue? Because this is a guy who coming out of Jacksonville, he caught the ball, but he wasn't like known for doing it. Like it wasn't like he is a receiving back. Like, oh, this guy is like a Christian McCaffrey. You can line him up a receiver, basically. And there was times that the Bucks did and it worked. So um, he definitely has earned, you know, the, this pay raise. And, you know, I think the Bucks are happy to have him back for three more seasons seasons to provide yet again that word you know more stability there and uh yeah you know, i'm sure he, he's happy to be back as well playing for a championship contender he's he's the most consistent running back we have had since uh honestly since like peyton barber except with leonard fournette you get about three four more yards per carry yeah, peyton barber peyton barber was very safe like, yeah he was it very seemed like safe. he stuck around a little bit longer than he should have but before that i mean what doug martin you know yeah, that, doug, that was yeah. really hard that was doug really martin, our last guy man, i missed that Doug yeah. Martin was a beast. Muscle I missed Doug Martin. He was the man. Hell he was yeah, a bright dude. spot during. He was a bright spot during some dark times. Yeah. Boys. That <laughs> I'll never forget that 2012 game against Oakland. Man, he ran wild. What was it? 200 and 250 yards or something. Three yeah. touchdowns. Yeah, something like that. Just one of the greatest fantasy performances of all time. Yeah, I was gonna, I was going to mention that. I think obviously fantasy football has gotten bigger now, but like at the time, that was like one of the highest like fancy point totals like in history or something yeah. obviously it's been it's been passed now but man jeff let me ask you a question so you said you've been watching bucks football for a little while right forever so forever Long do you suffer. have any like underappreciated players or just random players that maybe not everyone can appreciate but like you can appreciate from you know their time as a tampa bay buccaneer or just a player that you liked at some point, like, for example, you know, a lot of guys on that 2010 squad for me hold a very special place in my heart. Like, I'll never forget when Cadillac Williams got injured again, unfortunately, and it was his last major injury. And the Bucks just unleashed LeGarrette Blunt. And that first game he came in, those first few games to wrap up the season, that guy was a machine. Like, LeGarrette Blunt on that 2010 team was insane towards the end of the year. Uh, Mike Williams, you know, Josh Freeman, a lot of people don't really like him. I think he got a bad rap towards the end of it. But, you know, like guys like that, is is there anybody that sticks out to you? Man, I bought a LeGarrette Blunt jersey. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was all in. He was a monster, Blunt, bro. He was a monster. That's a great shout, man. That's a great shot. I don't know. Next time I come on, I'll have to, I'll have to like really rack my brain for that because, you know, two kids later, it's a little bit, uh, you know, my brain goes a little bit away, but. 
No, I mean, that's a great shout, man. Uh, LeGarrette Blount was a beast for the Bucks. I thought he was here to stay. That team was solid. Was yeah. that that 10-win ten ten win team that Raheem Morris was the head coach yep. of? Yeah, 10 and man, 6. I thought, and then... I thought they were sticking around for good. And Josh Freeman looked good in those cream schools. I, I was at that home game where he was wearing the cream schools and they ended up coming back late. I forget who they were playing. God, I forget who they were playing. Wasn't that was the one pa- of the it wasn't I the Packers. They got, I don't remember, but I remember they got 10 wins and I thought the future was the brightest it's ever yeah. been. And then the next year, you know, they fire Raheem Morris and Josh Freeman is nowhere to be found. And Hey, he was, was yeah, well, team, he was. Though. I don't know if you've heard stories, but he was Not people knew where he, he was. He was found. Yeah. yeah, they <laughs> knew was, where he was. He was yeah, he was found. He, he just was wasn't found. really where he was supposed to be. And unfortunately, that's just how it shakes out. It's uh you know, with stuff like that, we've always referred to it as it's a buck's life. It's generally just something that it just happens, I guess. But let's give you an update on the other side of the football. The other big signing from today, the Buccaneers have secured longtime veteran defensive end, Will Golston. He'll return to Tampa Bay for his tenth season. Now, as of this recording, I don't have the contract info. Evan, yeah, it, do you happen to know what no, it is? No, it's, it's not like officially official, yeah. but it's it's more than expected at this point. Yeah, they're 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 closing in in on the deal. They haven't signed it yet, but um, it, it, it's happening. Um, so do not have obviously any details. Would assume it's probably a one or or two year deal. Uh, Will Golson, I believe he's over thirty, so I don't think he's going to be going very long term. Um, it's an important piece. It's an underrated piece. Uh, and it's an important piece to their run defense. Will Golston is going to give you something as a pass rusher. Like he's not a complete zero, but you know he's known for for being stout against the run, and it's one of the reasons why the Bucks' run defense has been so good for the last few years. And it's a big piece to come back. So I, I think both sides are again, both sides are very happy to be back. I think most expect that Will Golston to be back, and now a lot of eyes turn to 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 a guy like the Nama against Sue. So um, we'll see what happens there. But yeah, for now, it seems like we'll Golston at least we will be back. And Golston's one of those guys where he's had a, a, a second wind in this Todd Bowles defense. I, I talk about that every single time we bring him up, but like his career, his effectiveness, not only just against the run, but like just his fit in that defense has been so much better like the real ones remember when when Will Golston was our four three defensive end and the Bucks really wanted him to be that tall, lean, edge rusher guy, and he just he just wasn't effective. Todd Bowles comes to town, changes up the defense a little bit, and this guy has absolutely been a stud. And I think what I like the most about him is that it seems like he wants to finish up his career in Tampa Bay. Like he's one of those guys on the defense where just like Levante David, man, I mean, he's one of the longest tenored guys on this team at this point. And it's good to know that he doesn't want to play anywhere else. And I think players like that are, are always good for the sake of your franchise. But, um, yeah, I mean, just just more longevity on, on that side of the ball. Jeff, your thoughts on uh, Golston coming back? No, I was going to say, think, say the same thing you just did. You nailed it for me. I like guys that want to be here, yeah. right? And it's easy. I mean, it's easy when Tom Brady's your quarterback. You think, oh, man, everybody wants to be here. You know, this is a great place to be, blah, 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 blah. But I mean, he's been through he's been through the dog days with the Bucks as well. And, you know, I like when guys stick around and I like when guys are rewarded for being loyal to their team. And, you know, I'm sure he he probably had other options to leave and probably make some more money elsewhere just because everybody's looking for good players. And he's a good player. You know, he's a steady he's a steady guy who's been in the league a long time and knows what he's doing. So for me, just to have another guy that's been in the locker room, who's been around Tampa for a long time, who wants to be involved in the community and be a part of everything that's going on with the Bucks right now. I love when guys stick around and I think he does, he deserves to reap all the rewards for being a part of this team. And, you know, guys like that, just speaking from experience of being in a locker room, you have no idea what guys like that mean to a locker room. You know, he's probably a steady driving force in the locker room, I'm sure. So getting him locked up and keeping somebody that really enjoys being a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, I always think that that's a win, you know, if, and they know exactly what they're going to get from him. If he's been around for 10 years, you know, the front office, the coaches, the players, everybody knows exactly what they're going to get from him. And, you know, by year 10, there's a lot of guys that would sour in a locker room or, you know, things things would got kind of go up and down and be unhappy. But shit. Oh, can I say that? Nah, yeah, yeah, you're, you're good. Yeah, it's a podcast. <laughs> it's a podcast. Yeah, it's a podcast. No, but yeah. So like shit, like if he wants to stick around and, you know, if, if, it's, if the staff wants him and he wants to be a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, he's a staple. And, I, you know, more power to him. I love that he's back. Yeah, it would have been sad to see him. It would have been sad to see him go. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Just because and, he's, and, he's been here that and long. He, he had interest from other teams. Apparently there was four, four or five other teams that had pursued him, but he was a guy, like you said, Jeff, that, you know, it sort of wanted to be in Tampa and, you know, at the end of the day for a locker room, you know, you, you know, very well, you've been in a, you know, a professional sports locker room. Um, you know, what those types of guys, what they bring and what they mean to a, to a team, uh, no matter the sport. So uh, it's definitely important to have him back. Hey, and a, a good market for Will, right? Honestly, hearing that there are four yeah, or five other yeah. teams, like I, I, I knew that there were going to be guys interested in him, but that was, that was a little surprising, but very, very good to hear. And I think that just speaks a little bit more to how his level of play has definitely boosted a little bit since uh, the introduction of this new defense a couple of years ago. Our buddy Joel in the live chat brings it up. He says, well, Golston is a franchise guy. And I, I wanted to talk about that for a second because – you look at this Buccaneers roster and, and there's so many guys that you could look at and say, Hey, that's a franchise guy. Like not only because there are a lot of pieces of that Super Bowl team there. So in a sense, all of those guys are already technically franchise guys, but you look around, I mean, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin just signed an extension. So he's guaranteed to be here for his first seven seasons in the NFL, which is a pretty good feeling, right? Mike Evans still under contract for a couple more years. Levante David likely going to spend his entire career here, at least in a perfect world he does. Will Golston coming back. There was a time on this Bucks team. I mean, hell, Leonard Fournette. We talked about him being our most consistent running back in a while, but there's so many franchise guys on this team, and that's a very good feeling when you talk about the future post-Tom Brady because there was a time in Tampa Bay where there really weren't any guys on the roster you could look at and be like, yeah, that guy... You know, at the end of his career, we're going to be comparing him to guys like Rondé Barber and Derek Brooks. Like for a very long time, I'd say since the departure of Derek Brooks, you know, some people might count Gerald McCoy, but like that, that's it, you know, for a really long time. And I, and I guess that just, that speaks to the new culture of this Bucks team, regardless of if Brady is here or not, because let's face mm. it, he's not going to be playing forever. We talk about how this team is built post Brady and, and all of that factors into it, but like, it's, it's just really really a good feeling. You know what I mean? Like it, mm. the more franchise guys, the better. And I think that speaks to the quality of not, not only the quality of the, the bucks and their front office staff, but just the franchise in general. And that's leaps and bounds from where we used to be. That's a cool thing for me. That's the cool thing about this bucks team is you're nailing it. Like Tom Brady gets all the shine, of course. Right. God bless Giselle. He's coming back. But when you look at the rosters, when you look at the defense, when you look at the offense, there are guys that are, been here for a long time and you know they're really buying into being a part of this team and being a part of this franchise for the long haul and we haven't had that since John Lynch Derek Brooks Warren Sa like we haven't had that since those guys so I hope you know even when Brady moves on these other guys need to be getting valued one guy that I love is Cam Bray this guy was this guy's a beast. Like this guy catches touchdowns. He was catching touchdowns from Jameis nonstop. He's one of the top, I think he's in the top 10 of touchdowns all time for the yeah. Bucks. And this man restructures consistently to stay part of this team so that he can help the team build into a winner. You know, he could have he, he's a guy that could have easily just said, you know what, you guys are bringing in Gronk, you got OJ Howard. Like, I can go get money. You know, like I'm a good pass catching tight end. Like, I can go get touchdowns, I can go get paid. But instead, he's done his job. Just He's done the job that's been asked of him, and he's stuck around in Tampa, and he's even restructured to make sure that he stays and keeps his team intact. And you look up and down the roster, and there's guys that are doing that consistently. And to say that for the Bucks is like, I mean, you say that five years ago, you're, not, you're laughing at yourself, right? So it's cool to see these guys that are sticking around and just building this franchise, and they're going to be here for the long haul, which we should all be pumped about. Yeah, you know, it's it's good that you bring up a guy like Cameron Bray because I think 10, 15 years when you're when you're talking to whoever your kids, your grandkids, whoever it may be, Cameron Bray would be a guy who might be kind of forgotten about uh, among a lot of people. And he's been he's been here since about 2014. He he was in and you know, off and on the practice squad and this and that. And then he finally stuck it in 2015. So I mean he's a guy who he caught a pass, he caught a touchdown pass in the NFC championship game last year. Um, I mean that's you know that's not something that a lot of people are gonna 
to remember, but um, you know, he definitely is a valuable piece. So I do like that. uh, That name you brought up, Um, you know, you could probably look, he he was a beast with Jameis. He was getting getting touchdowns on nonstop. He He was, 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 there was literally a time. He was a top tight end fantasy pick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was literally a time where he was a bigger red zone threat than, than Mike Evans was. Like Mm -hmm. only because, I mean, obviously Mike Evans was our whole offense sometimes. So he's getting a lot of attention in the red zone, but that's where Cam, that was his bread and butter, man. That's where he made his money. Mm -hmm. He gets touches, man. He gets TDs. I think he's, I looked this up not too long ago. That's probably why I'm spitting this out, but I think he's like top, I want to say top seven touchdowns all time in Bucks history. Yeah. Yeah, He's up there. Yeah. he, He doesn't get the recognition for it, but he's a guy that sticks around and, you know, everybody's looking for a guy, a tight end that can touch, that can catch touchdown passes. So I'm sure he, if he ever hit the market or want to hit the market, people would be fighting over him. But right, he sticks yeah. around. Ladies and yep. gentlemen, Jeff at Nella, thank you so much for jumping on the pod with us, my friend. Shout out to our guys over at Smack Apparel. We are teaming up for a t shirt giveaway. God bless Giselle. Follow us on Twitter for all the updates. We will be posting the official rules after the podcast at Cannon Fire Pod. At Redicus, R H E T T A K U S, at Evan NFL, at Smack Apparel. And Jeff, where can people find you and your content? At Jeff at Nella underscore one. Wait, at Jeff at, at Jeff underscore at Nella one. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I said yeah. that one. I did that a long time ago. At <laughs> Jeff underscore at Nella one. Yes. Perfect. All right, guys, you heard it here first. Make sure you get involved with that. Go follow us on Twitter. Should be a good one. Thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Really do appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me, boys. Looking forward to giving away some shirts. Yes, sir. We'll talk to you soon, pal. Later. Later. All right, for our YouTube audience, we are sticking around. Shout out to our guy, Jeff. Really appreciate you coming through, man. First time guest here on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't, uh, you know, a lot of the times we, when we have a guest on, it's been a guest who has been on before, but now it's, it's finally, you know, it's good to have Jeff on and talk a little bit about uh, what we got coming up. So excited about the giveaway. I uh, hope you guys all participate and Hey, you won't have a chance to win if you don't participate. So all you got to do, it's simple, right? We'll have the rules for you it's very soon. Just you know, all you got to do is just participate. You can win a free who doesn't like free stuff, especially when it's a, a T-shirt like that by a great company. Who doesn't like free stuff? Show your appreciation for Giselle for allowing Tom Brady to come back. Because ultimately, if Tom Brady said I wanted to come back and she said no, that probably would have been it. So yeah, it would have been a pretty need... short conversation, I have to imagine, where he calls up Jason Light and company and says, hey. Uh, sorry. Wife says, uh, wife says, no wife says I'm stuck here, but, um, yeah, God bless Giselle and God bless you, Evan, for, for talking as long as you did. So I could fix our little stream setup here. I, I, I knew my, I, I, I knew thought, my role. Yeah. I, I thought we were going to, I thought we were ready to switch over to a new scene, but clearly we were not. So, so let me ask you this, man, what is on your mind? Because we talked about Leonard Fournette. We talked about mm-hmm. Will Golston. A lot of the big bucks news is out of the way, but people still have questions. So what are you thinking about? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I was surprised. I I, I thought it was a little bit, more, just a tad more expensive, Leonard Fournette. Um, but like, it, it is what it is. Like, I'm not gonna be, you know, if it was like a little, if it was over seven, I'd be like, eh. But you know, it's fine. I think there's there's incentives that can take it up to 24. So yeah. if he reaches those incentives, I don't know what those incentives are. Um, but yeah, apparently he, he visited New England last night and then agreed the terms with the Bucks last night. So probably just to, you know, he wanted to check in with New England, see what was what. And once he saw, I mean, I think most of us were pretty confident he wasn't signing with the Patriots, but um, you know, to see what's what. And then he agreed to deal with Tampa uh the, the other the other uh, last night, which is Monday night. We're recording this on Tuesday. I, I think honestly. The best part of this deal for the Bucks is is one that it is a three year deal, right? We we talk about how this was this was his chance to kind of hit the market because he's going to be over thirty years old the next time he has that opportunity again. And as a running back, man, we we talk so much about how disposable that position is, but these are prime years. And with Leonard Fournette seemingly hitting his stride, you have to assume these next three years of football are going to be his best, or at least mm-hmm. comparable to his best. You know how important he is to the offense, but the fact that the Bucks are getting these prime years at the market price that they did, you know, I I, I think it's a win-win. Obviously, you, you wish you could cut some corners and pay him a little bit less, but he deserved it. 
I'm never going to be mad about a player getting their money. And we know that the guys in the front office are going to do what they can to make sure the Buccaneers are still cap compliant at the end of the day, because more moves are coming, folks. We, we still have uh, plenty of guys left to resign and plenty of new faces to bring in, too, from the sounds of it. I mean, technically, Rob Gronkowski still out there, too. So yeah, what the hell, um, man? Is he just... Is he just dodging their calls? Well, well yeah, he told you know, he, you you saw the video. He said that he was going to make Brady wait. So that's what he's doing. Um, <laughs> I guess. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, but obviously we'll have to see what happens with Nadam, uh, Nadam and Sue, Jason Pierre-Paul. Those are Rob Gronkowski, Sue, Pierre-Paul. Those are really the only three that are – I mean, you could have Ronald Jones and Giovanni Bernard, but, like, they're not huge, like, right. you know um, – especially now that Fournette's back, like the, those, you know, Pierre, Paul, Sue and, and Gronkowski are like the three, like last, like dominoes. I it, think, to fall. The Bucks were able to get it done, but we remember what the offense looked like with Leonard Fournette towards the end of the season. Like they were still winning games. Yeah. But when you have a running back like Leonard Fournette, who can get you the yards that you need when the Bucks run game is kicking and let me define kicking as far as the Bucks run game goes. When the Bucks run game is kicking as in they are picking up more than two yards per carry. You know, they're able to convert a couple of extra first downs because of the run game. They're able to set up second and two, second and three, whatever. You know, it's not so much 100 yards on the ground in the first half. It's just effective situational football when the Bucks need to run the ball because they are still a pass first team. But when you have a run game that works and it works in bursts like Leonard Fournette does, you it know, that's a, that's a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah, just, so, you know, I mean, just like you said, they're they're always going to be a pass-first team. Like, as long as Bruce Harris is the head coach, even Tom Brady's the quarterback, like, and you have these weapons. Like, you have Mike Evans, you have Chris Godwin, you have Russell Gage, you have most likely have Rob, Rob Gronkowski. You have one of the better offensive lines in the NFL. You're always going to air it out, right? right? So, it's not like a Tennessee situation where Leonard Fournette's going to get, just like you said, I think earlier, ran into the ground, right? Yeah. Like, that's not going to happen. Um you know, and, and that's also, I think, to the benefit of Fournette. But that's also why, you know, I kind of dis- disagree with Jeff there that, you know, I think his pass catching is very important because the Bucks aren't going to be just pounding, you know, pounding the rock, right? They're not going to be doing that, you know, 20, 25, 30 times a game. And he's going to have to catch the ball. Uh, so, you know, I think that's important. And that was a huge step for him in 2021. And I, I'm excited to see if he can keep it up because I had my doubts that he was going to keep it up the entire 2021 season. And he proved me wrong. So I'm hoping, you know, he, he's able to, to replicate that again. Yeah. Our buddy Joel on the live chat with another good question. He says, what would y'all rate the Russell Gage pickup? We talked a little bit about this on the last episode. We'll talk a little bit more about it now, but I almost sound like a broken record at this point, but I think my favorite part of the Russell Gage pickup is granted everything pans out with him and he is more than a serviceable wide receiver three. The fact that you got him locked up to a three-year deal and you can keep this wide receiver room consisting of Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Russell Gage as your top three. Like the Bucks have had the best wide receiver room in the NFL for what feels like eight years at this point, but like it, it really seems like that's the position where they still have the most longevity. You have a bunch of guys playing at an elite level with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, Russell Gage. He's a wide receiver three, but he really came into his own towards the end of the season for Atlanta last year. So I, I think just keeping that room together the way that they are. That's that's probably my favorite part about it, because the, the introduction of all these three year deals like this is this is a good feeling. He's yeah, Gage is probably I would consider him a low end wide receiver, too. Like he can be your wide receiver, too. But if he's your wide receiver, too, I don't know how great your depth is. Um, and, he, and he's a very is a good wide receiver three. Um, I think I don't think he's great or else he would have gotten more money. But, you know, I think he's a good wide receiver three. Um, yeah, the, the Bucks, the Bucks and, and Bucks fans have been kind of spoiled as far as wide receivers go for, for so, the longest well, time, for, like, like, like for said, a very long time. Yeah. They, they went for in 2012. They had Vincent Jackson and, and Mike Williams, Mike Rest Williams, piece, you know, the yeah, goat. of course. And then, um, and then they, they draft Mike Evans. So they have Vincent Jackson, Mike Evans for a little bit. But when they draft the Mike Evans, you really had probably like one year of like production from Vincent Jackson. You know, like him and Mike Evans, they just 
Jackson w- was slowing down and, and you know, and well, it Evans was, was it was only a couple of years into Mike Evans career where, you know, Vincent Jackson, his departure from the team, it wasn't like he announced his retirement. Like he just kind of didn't show up at camp. And then he, he didn't oh, no, show he, he up. A, for... He was a free agent. He wasn't resigning. Right. That's right. All. Uh, then, um, yeah. You know, and then obviously his contract runs out at the end of 2016. And you're like, oh, maybe they'll have a drop off. But then they go out and they sign Deshaun Jackson and they draft Chris Godwin there literally the next season. So then there's it's not like Mike Evans and a bunch of dudes. There's no drop off because you have two talented receivers. Whether you think of Deshaun Jackson, you know, whatever, he's still good. Like You can't deny that. And especially at that point, he was, too. So then and you also have O.J. Howard and Cameron Bray. Okay, so you get rid of Deshaun Jackson, but by the time you get rid of Deshaun Jackson, Chris Godwin has always already been developed into a good number two wide receiver. You still have OJ Howard, you still have Cameron Bray. And then by the time all this happens, you end up with Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski and and, and you got Brown. Chris Godwin and Mike Evans in their prime. Yeah, and then you, you have Antonio Brown, who was basically could have been a wide receiver one on some teams, just destroying corners and now yeah. and now you you know you had a little bit of drop off where receiver was a question and you went out and signed russell gage you re-signed chris godwin and now there, there's really no questions anymore so bucks fans for about 10 years don't really know what it feels like to have a weak wide receiver I mean, it, it's a rarity and i'll tell you who who you know who that's going to benefit the most when tom brady leaves town especially is our guy kyle trask I mean, if there's one thing that these, if there's one thing that these three year deals are doing, whether it's Kyle Trask or it's somebody else that maybe they bring in, depending on what the market looks like at the time. Uh, But the next quarterback of the Bucks after Tom Brady is going to be well suited enough to to go out there and get comfortable with his all star cast of, you know, offensive weapons. Well, especially if it's, you know, I think the most likely thing is it's going to be a rookie. Um, you know, I, I think it would be a, a first round, first round rookie that they would either trade up or be high enough in the draft to select. So if, if you're starting the rookie, you want to put him in, in the best situation possible. Um, and that would be one of the best situations possible. Now, in, you know, two, three years when you're presumably going to be having this rookie, will Mike Evans be the same player? Who knows, right? I mean, we don't even know if Chris Godwin is going to fully, you know, be the same player after the major injury. We don't know, but right now we're just looking at it as, you know, they're good players right now. You know, they're good players and it's going to be presumably a good situation three to four years from now as well. Um, Tom in the live chat says, I feel like we sign OBJ late into the season after he recovers. Well, one, I can say he's not going to be a free agent much longer. He'll be probably, I would guess, re-signing with the Rams here soon. Yeah. Um, he's not going to He's not gonna be sitting there. Um, and also, I don't know if the Bucks would have much interest um, obviously, it was, they had Antonio Brown last year, but they passed on the opportunity to sign a completely healthy Odell Beckham Jr. last year. Um, so, I mean, they didn't take the opportunity then, and uh, I, I just uh, I don't I don't see it. But crazier hey. things have happened, I guess. Yeah. Hey, I, I know we spend a lot of time talking about Chris Godwin, but I have to get this moment out there. My favorite Chris Godwin touchdown. My favorite Chris Godwin moment. During his entire tenure in Tampa Bay. I'm pretty sure I know what it's going to be. I, you know exactly what it is. If you guys have watched our channel, you probably know what it is. But it is his first career touchdown. Yeah. Jameis Winston looking. Fires to the right side towards the end zone. Chris Godwin. Game-winning touchdown over the New Orleans Saints. The Buccaneers finished that season 5-11. and I think so. But I mean, they, Tom Brady never threw a game-winning touchdown pass to Chris Godwin against the Saints. <laughs> yeah, Jameis Winston did. Tom Brady uh, did. That's gonna that's gonna make a lot of people in here very happy. Thank you for doing that. Uh, um, if, if if you can't tell by my voice, uh, yeah, that's on you. Oh man, I but I'll I'll never forget that touchdown in particular. One because it was his first career touchdown. Like, come on, dude. Um, two. It's a heck, heck of a first career touchdown. Yeah, two. It was on my birthday. It was, uh, I believe, it was my nineteenth birthday, if I remember correctly. But I could tell you this: I was. It was also... two thousand two thousand seventeen. So. Yeah. So nineteen. Um, and I can also tell you this much: I uh, 
I was working. I was on the clock. I was a, a so all right. Story time, folks. Uh, I was a banquet server for a company named Aramark at the Florida Aquarium. We were having a big event, basically, where people could drink and eat and whatever, whatever. Well, I, I kind of snuck away uh, to the outside. There was like a tiki bar, and it was all covered and everything. So I go over there, and I'm sitting there with a bunch of my coworkers, and we're standing at the bar watching the game. We'll walk away, come back, and then watch five, six minutes of the game, go do some work, come back. And it's we're watching that last drive, right? Like, we are, we are locked in. I'm not going anywhere. They don't need me. I'm not making enough money to go over there and, you know, miss this part of the game. Um, so I'm sitting there watching it with all my coworkers and, and game winning touchdown happens. We all lose our freaking minds and we're sitting there cheering, high five. And my boss comes out, yells at all of us to get back to work. But like, oh I, I didn't even care. You know, I had seen what I needed to, and, and I'll never forget that moment. So thank you to Chris Godwin. I, I know we've been gushing about this guy a lot, but I'm just so excited to have some of these guys back in Tampa. And the fact that, you know, the core of this team seems like it's going to be consistent for the next three seasons at the very least is just, it's a very, very good feeling. And it's a far cry from where we were uh, three weeks ago when we were talking about the Buccaneers <laughs> offseason and, and maybe some guys that very, would come back. Very, very different far cry. Yeah. It varied. I don't know if I've ever seen a, a complete just 180 from an offseason plan from, from, from a team. I don't know if I've ever seen it. Like on, on like that quickly, one thing happening that changes plan. Things happen every offseason. That change plans. It, it happens every off season. Sometimes you hear about it. Sometimes you don't. Right. That happens. I've never their plan was going to be completely different <laughs> had Tom Brady not returned. Like it, it's honestly crazy. Um, I I think Carlton Davis might be playing for a different team right now. I definitely think Leonard Fournette might be playing for a different team. Russell Gage. Um, Russell yeah, probably Russell Gage. Uh, Shaq Mason, probably not. Um, Ryan Jensen, probably is playing for a different team. I still think Chris Godwin's back. We talked about that a lot. Like, no matter who the quarterback would have been, so, Chris Godwin was going to be back. So, um, you, don't, you don't... Hang on. And then... <laughs> Logan, Logan Ryan wouldn't, wouldn't be there. Um, and then, you know, like, obviously, Rob Gronkowski... They already lost OJ Howard, so now you'd be talking about what do they do with the tight end, you know? So it would just be it would be chaos, and um, honestly, honestly, crazy that like this one eighty happened and just all this quick, right? Like they ran it back, and like nobody even like realized it was possible. <laughs> so, as far as Ryan Jensen goes, you you don't believe him when he said that Brady or not, he was coming back to Tampa. Uh... I don't. You, you think it was I, a bunch I, of malarkey. You think, you think really two, three do. million more dollars a year would have had him out of here? Uh, to play with Blaine Gabbert, yeah, I, I think. Who would you rather play with, Joe Burrow or Blaine Gabbert? I mean, I get it. I, I think it was a sure thing that the Bengals were going to make the strongest push at him. I mean, they got Alex Kappa. They're making a bunch of moves. They secured that offensive line. I mean, that's really. Aside from that, I can't really think of very much the Bengals have done other than shore up the biggest parts of that. What else uh, did they need to do? Yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> they're, you know, in a sense, they're going for two, but they're trying to get back to the ship so they can win it. But it'll be interesting to see. A, a lot of guys, the landscape of the NFL is changing. I mean, Tom Brady coming back is obviously All just right. the icing on the top, but this has got to be one of the craziest NFL offseasons in a these while. These quarterbacks, these quarterbacks are playing musical chairs hey, right Matt, Matt Ryan and Indy, yeah, right? I mean, I let's mean, let's talk about the NFC South for a minute as we start to wrap up yeah. the podcast. Uh, who are your quarterbacks in Atlanta as of right now? You got Marcus Mariota on a two-year deal. So Marcus Mariota, Jameis Winston just signed a two-year deal with New Orleans, Tom Brady, and I'm assuming Sam Darnold or Sam whoever Darnold, limps out there week one for yeah. Carolina. But Carol I mean, Carolina doesn't love Sam Darnold there. So Tom Brady is the longest tenured starting quarterback in the <laughs> NFC South. Like well, uh, people I mean, want to talk about Taysom Hill, but that guy's not a starting quarterback. We always, you know, always knew that there would be a, you know, a division, you know, with Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota and Tom Brady in the same division, but guess which one plays for the Bucks? It's just, you know, if, <laughs> if you would have said that back in like 2016, like, uh, Hey, uh, Jameis, uh, uh, Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota and Tom Brady are all going to be in the same division. Which one's playing for the Bucks? A week Nobody before, a week before the draft 2015, where they take, where they take Jameis first yeah. overall. If you tell somebody that, listen, bro, you're not going to believe this, but seven years from now, the NFC South is going to have Tom Brady. Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota, 
some kid named Sam Darnold. You'll know him a little bit later. But yeah. And, and you, 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 you would be like, you, you'd be like, oh, Jameis Winston's playing for the Bucks. You'd be like, I don't know who Mariota's playing for. And then you'd be like, I don't know, Tom Brady's probably playing for like the Saints or Falcons. And then, yeah, that the Bucks would probably be the, your last pick for, for Tom Brady because like the Bucks would have Jameis Winston. You'd be like, oh, I guess Mariota's not too good because he'd be on a different team. Listen, but Winston would be very good. It's, it's crazy. It's so funny because, you know, we talk about how abysmal the NFC South looks right now. Like, I think this is the Buccaneers' easiest path to a division title in 20 freaking years. So, you know, we, we probably won't. I don't know. We, we probably won't have too much concern as long as they can beat the Saints this year. But for a Bucks fan, as far as the NFC South goes, this is must-see television. I, I mean, you've got Jameis Winston versus Marcus Mariota, the battle of the top pick twice a year, Tom Brady versus Jameis Winston. Hopefully we get two barn burners because I think we were robbed of some more Jameis highlights against Tampa Bay last year. As much as I don't like to see them, I think Jameis is a stud, and I'd like to see what he can do in that offense moving forward. It does kind of suck knowing that he was their second choice. And then uh, Atlanta, I mean, that team's a dumpster fire. So hopefully Marcus Mariota can salvage something. But as a Bucks fan, you know, all of these quarterbacks you're more than familiar with. And the fact that the Bucks are running the South as far as it looks right now, that's that's the best part of all of it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it does on the surface. It looks very very easy yeah. now. I mean, I mean, the Saints, you know, the, the, the Saints still have a, a good defense. Um, they still have a very good defense. Um, I don't hey, think Dennis, the drop off. Dennis I, Allen I, is still there. Yeah. And I don't think like maybe the drop off on the offensive end won't be as, as like it, it'll be kind of big not having Sean Payton. But like, yeah, that defense, I still expect that defense to be very good. Um, they really only lost Marcus Williams on the defensive side. Like they haven't lost as many pieces there. Uh, Michael Thomas could be coming back. So the Saints could give you some trouble. But, I mean, the Panthers and Falcons, especially the Falcons, uh, the Panthers seem to be want to be more competitive. The Falcons seem to have given up, basically. Um, so, I mean, th- those are four games right there against the Panthers and Falcons that you basically got to win. Uh, you know, if you want to be taken seriously, um, I know divisions games are somewhat tricky every now and then because they're, they're close, you know, you know, them well, typically you play harder against a division opponent, but um, we'll see if they're finally able to beat the saints. But I do think that even if they, even, I mean, they got swept last year and still won the South. So like, that's not the, the end all be all. Right? No, it's like, not, you but it, you want to talk about moral victories and unfinished business. It almost feels like you have to, I don't know about sweep the Saints, but you got to get the you got to get the upper hand one out of two of those games. Yeah, well, I'll believe when I see it. Um, oh man! All right, wait until this is the season prediction show. Um, what, so, are, are you, do you have them winning like nine games? I mean, listen, the schedule hasn't dropped yet. We do know the Buccaneers' opponents. Our buddy Dark Angel in the live chat. Uh, we're talking about the division and how it's you know the easiest road to a division title for the Buccaneers ever. And he's like, yeah, but it's just everybody else on our schedule. And that yeah, is very you're not thinking point. of the division's going to play that schedule, too. <laughs> like, well, yeah, of course. Like, you can. No, you no, can... But, no, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you can't say, oh, the Bucks schedule. So, yeah, well, they're, the Bucks division, the Saints, Panthers, and Falcons got to play the same teams. Like, the, the only teams that they don't are, are the, the Chiefs, the Packers, who just lost Devontae Adams, and, and the Cowboys, I think. Other than that, like, they still have to play the, the Bengals and the Rams, and, like, they still have to play all those teams. So, like, it's a difficult schedule for them, too. Um, so we'll wait and see. It's going to be a fun year, folks. It has been fun talking to you guys over the last hour or so. That's just about going to do it for this episode of the Cannon Fire Podcast. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us live over on YouTube.com. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Plenty of great Buccaneers content. We've got more than just the podcast as well. Plenty of Red and Pewter content to dive into, so make sure you go check that out. Follow the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of those are Cannon Fire Podcast. Best place to go for updates on the show. And, of course, Buccaneer news as it happens. You know how important that is this time of year. So make sure you get on it. Follow my co-host Evan on Instagram at Bucks underscore daily, the number one Buccaneers fan page on Instagram. You can also find him on Twitter at EvanNFL and check out his written work at BucksNation.com. You got anything in the cooker for right now? Any any stories you feel like teasing? 
Oh, I mean, I, I am going to have a, a free agency grades here coming out soon. Um, I'm probably going to be talking about the, the Bucks, like the outside stuff, as well as re-signing their own. So um, be on the lookout for that. Probably either, you know, the end of, end of this week, early next week. Sounds good, man. Last but not least, find myself on social media, Facebook. Yeah, Instagram and Twitter. Good Lord. At Redicus, R-H-E-T-T-A-K-U-S. If you follow me, I will follow you back. An important reminder, be on the lookout for the contest rules. We're teaming up with Smack Apparel, giving away our God Bless Giselle t-shirt. And uh, if it goes well, maybe we'll have a few more of these throughout the course of the offseason. But go check us out on Twitter, at Cannon Firepod, at Redicus, at Evan NFL, and at Smack Apparel. We'll talk to you guys in the next one. Of course, if there is any news between now and then, we'll keep you updated. Maybe we'll talk to you sooner than later. I don't know. But it's been fun. Buccaneers still have some work to do. Some guys expected to be back. So expect some more news throughout the rest of the week. We'll keep you updated on all that and more right here on the Can of Fire podcast. I am your host, Rhett Matthews, signing off for my co-host, Evan Wanish. We'll talk to you in the next one. Until then, and as always, go Bucks.